Welcome to Harness for Microsoft.NET and Azure. Over the past few months, we've been working hard to deliver .NET support for our customers. One of the first things you'll see now is in cloud providers, we've added direct support for all of the Kubernetes platforms. So if you've got a Kubernetes clusters in any cloud, you can deploy your .NET Core applications, as well as Microsoft Azure. So you can simply put in your client ID, your tenant IDs, and you can add as many Azure accounts as you want. Um, once you've got your cloud set up, we can go ahead and create an application. So I'm going to go ahead and create my .NET application. And in an application, Harness has five key things. We have our services, which is the artifacts. So these could be IIS websites. These could be .NET Core containers. We've got environments, which is the infrastructure. Workflows, how you deploy a service to an environment. Pipelines, which stitch together workflows and then triggers, um, as well as environment variables. So what we're going to do now is create two new services. So first, we're going to create a new .NET Core application. I'm going to pick Docker from the dropdown for the artifact type. I'm going to point the service to Artifactory, uh, my local repo, and I'm going to give it the link to where the Docker container is. So now Harness can version control that. We've got all our Kubernetes specification. So all of that is managed and version controlled for us. You can manage that all within Harness for your .NET Core application. If you want to add any environment variables or secrets, you can also add that as part of the service, which you see here. So that's our first kind of .NET Core application. Let's go ahead and add a new .NET IIS application. So if we scroll down now in the artifact dropdown, you'll see there's three new categories, IIS website, IIS application, and virtual directory. I'm going to go and add where my IIS application is. So I'm going to point it to an S3 bucket. And what you'll notice is we've now linked the artifacts and Harness has automatically generated the deployment scripts. So in terms of the download artifact PowerShell commands, the expanding the artifacts, the application pools, as well as creating the website, that's all taken care of us by Harness. So now we've got our two services. What we're going to do now is create a new environment to deploy those services in. So I'm going to add environment. I'm going to give it a name, .NET test environment. And we're going to go ahead and add our services to this environment. So I'm going to click Add Service Infrastructure. I'm going to pick my .NET Core application. I'm going to choose Kubernetes as the deployment option. And I can choose any cloud. So I'm going to pick Microsoft Azure. And what we'll Harness will do is it'll query the account and it'll pull back all my subscription information, the resource groups, as well as the clusters that are available. So all that is dynamically pulled. So now that's the infrastructure set up for my .NET Core application. I'm going to do the same for my IS website. I'm going to use WinRM, and I'm going to pick um, on-premise data center. So I'm going to pick a physical on-premise data center to deploy to. I'm going to put in a few host names, and I'm going to give it a WinRM connection. So I'm going to give it admin in this particular case. I'm also going to add the same application, but I'm going to deploy it to Amazon. So I'm going to pick the same IS website. I'm going to use WinRM, and I'm going to use Amazon test account. I'm going to pick the region I want to deploy to, the load balancer, give it a connection, and then a VPC. And if need be, I can also add some tag information as well if that's what I want to provision some nodes. So now I have one application, and it's going to deploy to different clouds. I'm going to now create deployment workflows so we can deploy those services to each of the environment. So first, I'm going to deploy my IIS workflow. I'm going to pick the environment, um, my service, and then the actual infrastructure. Um, and you can see now Harness has created a wizard that guides me through how to deploy that service to the environment. So as well as deploy, what we can also do is verify the deployment. So I'm going to point it to my AppDynamics monitoring server. I'm going to select my application. And for 15 minutes, Harness is going to validate the performance after the deployment. You can see we've got rollback strategies. We can actually add variables to the workflow. So if you want to templatize this workflow for other IIS applications, you can do the same. Now I'm going to add the workflow for my .NET Core application. So I'm going to point it to my environment and the service. And now what we're going to do is we're going to upgrade that environment. And I can be selective. I can say 5%, 10%, how many nodes I want to upgrade. I'm going to upgrade 10% of the nodes. This time I'm going to choose New Relic to verify my .NET Core application. I'm going to select my application in New Relic. And for 15 minutes, it's going to validate performance. I've also got rollbacks. So it's going to automatically roll back the application if I need to. Um, and so now I've got two workflows. So what I'm going to do is create my own pipeline to then run those workflows. So I'm going to create a .NET pipeline. And phase one of my pipeline is I'm going to add 
my .NET Core application, sorry, my IIS application. So it's going to deploy that first. If that completes, it's then going to deploy my .NET Core application. So typically these pipelines have multiple stages. They can either be separate environments or they can be multiple services. It's entirely up to you. Now we've got our pipeline. I'm going to create a trigger that's going to run this pipeline on a specific condition. So I'm, the condition for me is when there's a new version of my .NET Core application, it's going to run this pipeline. And so now I'm going to tell it, run my .NET pipeline, and I'm going to use the last collected artifacts from my repositories in JFrog and my S3 bucket. And that's going to now run automatically run the pipeline. Um, I can manually kick that off if I want to. So I can go to continuous deployment. We've also got a configuration code view. So if you want to drive all of the configuration and harness through YAML or configuration as code, you can do that. So you can see here my .NET application, you can see all the YAML that was generated when we built that pipeline. Um, and it has bi-directional sync with Git. Git. So obviously Microsoft bought Git Hub. Um, so we've got kind of out of the box integration there if you want to version control it. We also have a template library. So if you've got a lot of PowerShell scripts you want to reuse in your pipelines, what you can actually do is templatize them. So you can create all of your scripts within the harness template library and you can select PowerShell and you can basically paste them in or reference them as files and you can reuse those across your deployment pipelines. So you can see here, here's a template library. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go to continuous deployment and I'm going to run the pipeline that I just built. So I'm going to click start new deployment and I pick my application and I pick the pipeline that I just created and then it's going to pull all of the versions from my repos and then it's going to actually run the deployment. And what we're going to see now is we're going to watch the deployment in real time. We're going to see every single step that executes. I can debug the deployment so I can see the particular PowerShell scripts that we're running. So in a few seconds, you'll see the download of the artifacts, the expanding of the artifacts. So we get a real-time instant view of what's going on in the deployment. So basically in seven minutes, we've created a .NET pipeline from scratch for two services, and I've run the pipeline, and you can see how easy it can be in Harness. Sign up for your trial at harness.io.